नमस्ते एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यूएचवी 3 इन यूएचवी 3 वी वर ऑन मॉड्यूल 3 टॉकिंग ऑफ द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द सेल इन लेक्चर 13 एंड वी वर स्पीकिंग अबाउट awakening to the higher activities of the self awakening to contemplation so we can see our relatedness with other units and focus on our participation with other units awakening to the activity of understanding with which we can appreciate the self organization in every unit the harmony that is there innately in every unit and also looking at how i can help in that harmony or be with that harmony at least not to disturb it this is for every unit and ultimately awakening to the activity of realization from where we can see the submergence of all the units in space the basis for the units being energized being self organized being able to see their relatedness so we spoke of that and yesterday we had given this task for reflecting on investigate into your natural characteristic your innateness your coexistence so if you have thoughts on that what you could observe within you or if you have any questions regarding what was discussed yes uh, madam good morning madam can you hear me yes we can hear you. yeah yeah good morning madam good morning all um, actually i just want to share on a, a small incident uh, last week uh, my daughter uh, was uh, uh, shouted on uh, seeing uh, centipedes in our washroom and um, actually immediately i killed it that centipedes in, immediately i killed it and after that after that i realized that Uh, there was some lack in a uh, uh, cleaning part that is from my side the cleaning and also we found that the centipedes used to come uh, during only on certain periods um, certain period so i realized that the insects are coming out uh, to the uh, home from their boundary because of our uh, um, uh, th- that is lack in the, that cleaning uh, part so and then uh, after after that i uh, realized that and then i used i used to clean the washroom uh, daily and then uh, nowadays uh, after the, this week or nowadays uh, this is not happening so from that i can able to uh, realize that uh, insects are uh, they are stay in their boundary only but we are the uh, we are giving um, the space for them to come out from that boundary so i can able to realize uh, thank you didi thank you for the ji thank you for your observation yes. i yeah um of course you could see this and i'm sure there may be you know many people with many examples i just want to mention something see question is um for most people you know it is almost like oh we are not supposed to do this it's not like that see mm-hmm. we do this as far as possible with understanding when you don't have a choice and you have to kill you know an insect or something again all those things matter no our understanding of whether there is a self associated with it or not because the self you know has a will to live and that makes lot of difference and so many things like that yes so if we can do 
with other options we manage we try yes. if absolutely no choice is there you may have to also okay do some of these things and i mean most important thing is to see holistically to be able to see that i do have a role in being in harmony being in coexistence so if there are other options i can use i will try to use them before i um get to the killing part yes yes sure did sure did thank, thank you. you thank you for your observation yes thank you But, yeah specifically i wanted to mention that you know when we say you know i like yes we lata ji were sharing that if something disturbs me yeah yeah sure share yeah. <laughs> the no, important big, thing is if yeah, we yeah yes. if we have yeah let me just uh, i'm speaking for everybody yeah. just for you so if i have this um preconditioning that this is something bad then certainly i will have a feeling of opposition and i will want to destroy it now if i have a feeling that okay this is one more creature in the world and usually you know it will not do harm to me i will think of ways of getting rid of it but getting rid of it in the sense letting it go into its own environment if possible of course in the rare occasion when i can't and there is no other option i may resort to killing it also but i will do so with all this understanding of the four orders of the nature uh, being able to see you know my role being able to see that in this existence every unit has a role to play every unit has significance and so on all of that and also this brings to light that how important it is for us to have the right understanding to awaken to the higher activities because with our kind of preconditionings we may have many preconditionings so with those preconditionings with those sanskars we may have we may feel disturbed irritated by many things which are not really doing anything to us like yesterday we were discussing about owl being a bad omen now the poor owl is sitting outside hooting or whatever it, you know making the sounds it does it's not disturbing us it's not bothering us it's like any other bird outside but because we have this preconditioning we have this idea that this is something that is uh, bad it signifies something bad that's going to happen to us so we kill it unfortunately so those kind of things we need not do those kind of um activities we need not get into if we have the understanding i'll give you another example um see in hyderabad where we live there is in the rainy weather when a lot of people's asthma sort of perks up and becomes worse there is one old traditional uh, family a gentleman who down the traditions they have been distributing this medication for people to help them with their asthma and he gives it for free and how he gives it is he puts it inside the uh, you know a small fish raw live fish inside of that and you go to that person and that he just puts that in your mouth and you are supposed to swallow it so this was going on from many generations you know, the tradition of this family providing what they called fish medicine for asthma so that is okay that one can see that he is trying to do some good out of this but what it led to this 
now the preconditioning that has come about is oh when the rain starts when the monsoon starts at that time everybody must eat fish it's good so people are catching fish selling fish and everybody is eating fish on that day so this is something that is totally uh, you know not with any understanding it is just a preconditioning how we change the meanings over time based on taste i suppose based on whatever is suitable for us so uh, then our behavior changes accordingly and that can be you know something that is not worth emulating rather if we can look at things with understanding then i am sure that there are many other ways we can find so similarly you know this thing about um, of course now there is lot of awareness about plant based diets but for a long time it was uh, said even in the medical journals medical texts medical education that a vegetarian diet lacks sufficient protein so therefore one has to have non vegetarian intake for sufficient protein in the diet but this is something which doesn't have any sound basis to it if we see that uh, you know in the western uh, region of course now with the awareness people are aware of lentils and so on but earlier there was no not much awareness about um the dals that are eaten in the in our tradition which can be high in protein specifically the ones with the the, the whole whole dals heavy ones like you know um, some of those black um whole urad or whole moong or rajma lobia chana those kind of things and in fact uh, the national institute of nutrition in hyderabad did a research study many years ago where they have shown outright that many of these dals provide more protein than egg and meat and some of them as much as chicken and so on so now you can see that it becomes baseless so if we investigate into it there will be always choices but when we don't understand things we go with whatever is being said you know and it forms a preconditioning in us so rather we can start seeing things in a more holistic manner and then go from there these are just examples i'm just giving uh you know there are choices we are making how we make the choice depends it's up to us yes anybody has any um observations regarding the assignment that we had given we can take that sharing Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, please. Uh, ma'am, actually, when I try to understand these terms like bliss, satisfaction, peace, and happiness, so uh, for me, satisfaction, mother, before the context of UHV, I don't think. i was ever satisfied so i i really felt and i really still feel i i don't think i have stopped feeling that but i still feel that uh, you know every day when i meet people and i and i and i see you know they have their own problems and how their problems hinder my work so for example if i 
i i am into publications of my own department so they don't really compile work and uh, many a times i'm i'm really charged up why they haven't compiled but they have a family life that they lead wherein they have they have small children but after 3 4 days i get to know about it i get to know mm-hmm. about it like on friday when i finally ask them you know why why haven't you submitted something that was asked from monday or something like that mm-hmm. and they very genuinely later on tell me you know they were busy with because the students are right now on vacation so they were spending time there i really feel uh, guilty in that sense so uh, i'm trying to word it in the sense that i cannot be satisfied because i feel guilty a lot because i affiliate a lot of expectations from people and sometimes it is hard to understand that it's not them it's me i i was overcharged and i still cannot correlate how you know people are busy with their kids because i don't have right now i don't have that responsibility in my own life but i try to understand it i try i do try to think maybe yeah it's it's i try to explore satisfaction for myself and i really am not i i i feel a lot of guilt no uh, yeah yeah mm-hmm. so see i think i would focus on the point that you know if i can see my natural acceptance and i can see that i don't intentionally want to do the wrong thing i don't intentionally want to make another person unhappy so if i can see my natural acceptance and i try to focus on that then i will also slowly be able to see that that is the natural acceptance of every other person no not just me so intentionally nobody wants to do wrong everybody does want to do right by everybody else but so many times it may be other things that are that we are involved with it could be you know that we don't see the significance in the life it could be even it could be that we are just wasting our life you know with being busy on chatting on the phone or something like that but there also if we can see that you know it this is a lack of understanding for even people who do heinous crimes they don't actually want to do it if you ask them they don't want to but somehow with circumstances being what they are or you know whatever may have happened in their life we don't know we may have had a good upbringing others may not have had the good fortune of such an upbringing so many factors may be involved in another's lack of competence but if i can have a clear idea about my intention mm. and the other's intention being similar to mine then this problem will not come and so far as guilt is concerned see once you have done an act once the behavior is once that action is over now repenting about it um is not such a good idea because even this is a feeling that is not naturally acceptable to you so you feel not so good about it no like you are mentioning so to be able to see that okay whatever i did at that time it was with lack of understanding from now on can i be more you know can mm. i refer to my natural acceptance more so that i don't get into this again but certainly guilt you know no need because it's mm. over and done with and now you cannot go back and change that but what you can do is learn from that and try to apply it from now on so if i thought i lacked understanding then and i have better understanding now 
then i can mm. apply it in my activities to come uh, uh and ma'am if i may can i uh, can i talk on peace as well as some doubt on peace yes uh, ma'am not before this assignment so uh, this assignment was like two days or one day back so two weeks ago i went to my brother's place he is in the army right and <laughs> i i i don't flaunt uhv but yeah i was starting to discuss uhv with him so his definition of peace is very different in the sense now i'm not saying that it's aligned with the uhv or something like that <laughs> his definition of peace is based on uh you know a uh, a a planning of offense a planning of offense from the other side you know like they are the defense forces and he was making this argument he's also he's a good hearted person that i know but uh, he, he he said that peace is a preparation for defense right and in that <laughs> you have to anticipate the other in the sense you cannot so i was talking about self and the other not that i was propagating this uhv but i was just talking about self and other and he said that you know in the armed forces uh you have to investigate the other you have to be prepared on their body movements and you know all the all that all those things that are happening at the border right now i'm not isolating that instance but he was using those examples and i and i really felt that you know yes sometimes right now maybe in the like next 30 years we can restore some different kind of peace but it was really a good revelation for me that when he was talking about peace he was actually talking about being prepared for offense mm. yes mother yeah. yeah yes that is very true and for mm. that is how it is right now in mm. our hope for peace we are actually preparing for war that's yeah. <laughs> Yes so I, I mean yeah I could not talk further with him but I understood I actually see I I really did not want to change his mindset because that is that is his mindset when he goes for training every single day he is actually preparing what the other can do and I am learning things regarding the self right that is what UHV is and his training is based crucially on what the other can do you know how they can deceive you and how they can infiltrate and so yeah that See, was something yeah so somebody who is working in that kind of setup will have that sort of um, training and those kind of preconditionings and you know when it comes to say defending the borders of the country um securing you know your countries you know the security of the people at large in the country and so on so yes some people have been given that role they are also just playing their role if we see it like okay. that then we can see that yes you know for them such a mindset will be required now if they are told about all this they will perhaps not be able to do their job yes sir they will probably drop that job so mm-hmm. for now this is the pattern but just think that if we could have a society where it is like a big family one world family there is no opposition between nations there is no talk of nuclear warfare there is trust among people then how good a world that could be that, that is also a possibility and that you know for some of us who can envision that we are trying to work towards that yes sir mm-hmm. it will take time whatever it is but in that process we are becoming more and more calm so it starts with our own feeling becoming better and better more in line with our natural acceptance and with that when we make effort for our participation it helps outside also yes so thank you thank you for thank you thank you yeah
Okay, I think we can go to the next lecture. Lecture 14. We can talk about how the higher activities are guiding our lower activities. So how we spoke of this briefly yesterday also, how the higher activities start guiding our desire, our imaging. So let's discuss that a little bit. Next slide. Yeah. So we spoke of these higher activities and what we can understand about these higher activities is that you know these activities with which we are able to see the relationship, the harmony, the coexistence. Now that becomes our guide for our desire. So now what we are able to see is that we want to live in accordance with relationship, harmony, coexistence. Because as we awaken to the higher activities, we see that is how this entire existence is. That is how all the units are already relating. It is just the human being who is misguided. So now when we take guidance through our higher activities, or even if we haven't awakened to the higher activities, if we take guidance through our natural acceptance, we can see this, that our desire can be to live in accordance with this. So for instance, if I see my relatedness with other human beings, then my desire becomes to live with these values in my interactions with all human-human behavior, with all human interaction. That becomes my strong desire. So like that, we'll be able to see that my desires get set right. No longer am I um, trying to, you know, earlier what, what was guiding my desire, we said, right? Our desires can be motivated by three sources. We talk of it, no? Preconditioning, sensation, and natural acceptance. So more and more, as I keep referring to my natural acceptance, more and more of my desires start being guided by my natural acceptance and less and less are being influenced from the outside through the preconditionings or the sensations. So my desires are set right. Next slide. Now, how do the higher activities guide thought? When we say thought, we are talking about those activities of analyzing, comparing. So you can see in this diagram that you have the activities of the B2 block being shown there. That this desired is in the form of imaging. The thoughts are, you know, we are constantly thinking something, analyzing, comparing things. And then the expectation from the outside, with that we are, you know, selecting, tasting. So we will notice that in the lack of guidance, in this case, you know, when we don't have, when we haven't awakened to the higher activities and preconditionings and sensations, these are ones that are motivating our desires, our thoughts, then how would it look? So if you see when these are unguided or 
they are under the influence of preconditioning and sensation then one is you know sensation whatever appeals to the sense organs of the body my desires are based on that and my thoughts run in that direction so i start moving for moving towards this that whatever appeals to my senses i start thinking about it that becomes my desire and i go for it regardless of whether it is nurturing for the body whether it is not nurturing for the body you know if the taste feels good i want to continue with it if the you know the taste of the say the temperature on the skin if it is hot weather and i put on the ac now it feels pleasurable the the skin feels cool so i start using that because i want to have this pleasurable sensation all the time so like that we'll see that slowly it may become like an obsession for sensation i may start working towards if it if my senses are unguided i may start working towards being over obsessed over indulgent about my um, the health of the body so for me it may become that you know to take care of the health of course i may accumulate a lot of wealth i may start you know visiting big doctors hospitals and so on i may start doing all kinds of tests i may you know not really rightly utilize either the body or the resources but rather i may indulge in them you know? or i may go to the gym and i may sort of keep working on the form and the property you will find that mostly our fixation in all of these is form and property we are focused on what the unit looks like and how it can be appealing to me in terms of the sensation so this is when my senses are unguided my thoughts are unguided and of course i want to have more and more wealth because somewhere i have linked this wealth with happiness because i think when i have more than enough then i will be happy but unfortunately because i don't have the understanding of how much is enough that more than enough never happens because even if i have more than enough i still feel deprived i still think i don't have enough and so i keep accumulating more and more i have this obsession for accumulation for profit so you feel you find that if you know our senses are not guided if our thoughts are not guided by the higher activities if our desires are not guided by the higher activities then we can easily fall into this trap and we may have experiences of such things in our life also so if we look at you know um, we go to the next slide the same thing we are talking about here you can open up the slide so when you talk of when we say preconditioning so we've been mentioning this again and again preconditioning when we are assuming something without really knowing about it so we have been taught something we have heard something we have read something based on that we have formed some opinion and we think that is true not necessary no? we have not verified it for ourselves so it may be an opinion 
it may be an assumption may or may not be in line with understanding isn't it now because i have not awakened to the higher activities within me this assumption is actually dependent on something or someone outside isn't it so somebody said something therefore some experience happened outside with me therefore i have this precondition somebody didn't return my money therefore i started having mistrusting that person and many other people and so on so like we were talking about you know preparing for war in the hope of peace so the saying that statement itself seems so absurd how is it possible but see our assumptions how they lead us to such um conclusions without understanding so these kind of preconditionings one is we are dependent on the outside this is not from within us so we haven't even verified it the other thing is because it is you know things outside keep changing today i have one preconditioning tomorrow it may change so it keeps changing and the most important thing about this is whether it will lead to my harmony or not that is a big question mark and you see that is what is significant for me i want to be in harmony all the time so if i am not there if i don't have that harmony within of course i am unhappy so now who is responsible for my unhappiness i am because i am not able to seek guidance from the higher activities within and i am just looking outward for my happiness so that was precondition similarly sensation anything that involves the five sense organs of the body has to do with sensation sound touch sight taste smell all of them and we have talked several times of that example of you know you eat something you are hungry it's tasty it's necessary for the body you keep eating you know it still feels tasty but now your stomach is full it is not really necessary for the body but you keep eating because the taste is nice you like the taste if you still keep eating not only is it not necessary for the body but you will find that the taste also you don't enjoy as much the same thing you start eating you are very hungry you gobble it up but towards the end what is left then you start saying you know the salt is little less in this the salt could have been more and uh, i don't really like it like this and maybe we should have had some sauce with it or chutney with it and those kind of things you know you will find that the taste seems to be decreased for you not that you know i mean earlier also that physical facility that food was the same but earlier my um what i thought of it was something very different you know i thought it was very tasty now because my stomach is full now it is like i am saturated now even the taste seems to not be there and now if somebody forces me to eat more now it becomes intolerable i just want to get away from it i don't want to continue it any more and you will find this true of all sensations all sensations it comes to a point where it will become intolerable you have to move away from it so that is one source and then we have the natural acceptance this natural acceptance is the one that is coming from within this is the only one that is really coming from within so this is what i accept very naturally and you will find that whenever i do this whenever my desires are in line with natural acceptance 
there is harmony within me i feel happy within i want to continue this state no i don't want to come out of it at all unlike what we talked of in the sensation part that you want to at some point get out of it you're fed up of it this will never happen you want to continue being in that state because that is the state of harmony that is the state of happiness that's when all my thoughts are um in line with my natural acceptance so this continuity is not only desirable it is possible also so when i have this you know when i refer to the natural acceptance i have this assurance that this is the way things are my natural acceptance is for relationship for harmony for coexistence so it gives me that assurance that yes this is all i have to refer to to verify and i have the answer it gives me the satisfaction also to be able to see that whenever i do this i am in harmony i am comfortable with it and i find that this is not just my case this is true for everybody if i can see my natural acceptance i will also be able to see that this is the natural acceptance of each and every human being and so this you know this is my natural acceptance this is the natural acceptance of the other that's when i am able to see that there is nobody with a so called bad intention the intention is pure always what is lacking is the competence so if somebody is lacking in competence i need not get disturbed isn't it yeah. any questions we can take it otherwise we'll keep moving forward i'm assuming this is all very clear in fact i think we have been talking about these issues informally otherwise also but if there is any question or observation right now about this we can take it if not we'll keep moving forward okay so we can go to the next uh, good morning good morning i just wanted to share one uh, uh, incident uh yes, day before yesterday uh while coming to home after the college i was bringing uh, i purchased some of the gloss, uh, groceries written about 3 4 groceries written and then i uh, i was putting it in my vehicle so i just heard a sound but that time i did not uh, respond to it i thought okay something like something has fallen down when i came back home i took that bag and came to home when i saw that uh, there was one thing which was missing and at that time i remembered that sensation which i have received and immediately i came to know that it must have been fallen down when i went to the car i saw that it was there so what i could see that Uh, it's not that always uh, sensations which you find are not important at that time but at different time after some time uh, you may give a right meaning to it that is what i was experiencing i don't know how relevant it is uh, for today's discussion but i just uh, felt it ji yes so yeah sensation you know of course sensation by itself is not a bad thing how i interpret it that makes all the difference so if i interpret it as something that is for you know for my pleasure and i keep sort of doing this you know working towards getting more and more indulging in that sensation certainly that is not the right utilization of the sensation 
but using the sensation rightly certainly by all means this is possible and this is what we do so sensation by itself is not bad true um so looking at this slide now if we look at when we try to use sensation for happiness what happens so you can see that there is some physical object right it could be food it could be whatever it comes in contact with the body leads to some sensation in the body in any of these forms right any of the five sense organs now the sensation is there i taste the sensation lot of times what i find is if the taste is favorable i feel good temporarily i feel happy pleasure you can say if the taste is unfavorable that means if i don't find it favorable to me i become unhappy this also temporary for some time it will last so like that example we took and there are many such examples right so if you know one person may like salty food so he comes home and he finds you know the food is to his liking he thinks oh this is very good food another person who craves for sweet things same food he finds it very um sort of insipid and doesn't like the food so based on whatever we think is favorable to us that is also a meaning that we have given that this is tasty this is not tasty what is tasty to me may not be tasty at all to the other person some people eat lot of chilies you know when we used to do workshops with um bhutan lot of people eat lot of chili there even where i live in um hyderabad lot of people eat lot of chili so for them it's not tasty until there's lot of chili in it but people like us you know we are not able to eat that kind of food it's certainly not for us it certainly not something which we would call a favorable taste so you will find that what we consider as tasty not tasty pleasant not pleasant taste that is all the meaning that we are attaching to it and with that you know whatever pleasure we are getting of course it is temporary it cannot be long lasting like that example we saw about the tasty and necessary going up to the intolerable that is true for all sensations you will find that at some point it becomes saturated you can't stand it anymore you want to get out of it you don't want to continue it so it is very clear then that it cannot be a source of continuous happiness in you for that continuous happiness for that harmony within i have to look inward if it is only sensation that i am looking at then i can have some temporary pleasure or excitement but at some point i will want to come out of it i don't want to continue with it all the time yeah. next slide no what about sensation for the health of the body and the fulfillment of the purpose why we are here purpose of the self so if we look at you know what can be the right utilization of sensation what is the real role of sensation you find that certainly its sensation by itself is not bad it is that meaning that i had given it is that indulgence i was going after 
seeking happiness in that sensation that was the problem but the sensation is there and i can use it rightly so i can use it for keeping the body in good health by nurturing the body protecting the body so the sense of smell for instance you know some food you made in the morning by evening you are not sure if it is fit for consuming whether it will be nurturing for the body or not you smell it isn't it you smell it to see you know is it does it seem right or is it getting spoiled and you can tell by the smell so that would be a right utilization of that sensation because you are using the sensation to see that whatever you are feeding to the body is actually nurturing for the body not going to harm the body so like that sensations can be used in the very right way for helping to nurture the body to protect the body and so on and like vinay ji also gave an example of how you can utilize the sensation rather than using it for trying to get happiness similarly you can use this sensation to exchange this right understanding and right feeling if you see the purpose of the self if my purpose to me is clear why i am here what is my role in this existence if i can see my purpose then i can also see that this is a need of the self to have the right understanding with that to have the right feeling and this is possible through education and sanskar so i use these senses to exchange this information to try and you know first for myself try to understand these things get the information from somebody else or something else then try to explore it within myself and then with the help of the body with the help of the sensation try to um share it with others so because now my role is clear my purpose is clear i work towards that using sensation rightly utilizing it properly if you look at sensation in animals see sometimes people say oh um we keep talking of animals but animals are better than us in terms of they know how much to eat so if you look at sensations in animals it is naturally restrained they don't have to make too many choices in that by nature it is naturally restrained for the health of the body so you find you know i keep giving this example you look at stray dogs you will never find fat stray dogs they don't eat more than their hunger but you look at pet dogs you will find many overweight dogs with lot of health issues because now human beings are involved so human beings are taking the decision of feeding them more and more just like we are making you know the wrong choices using the senses wrongly for ourselves we are trying to do the same for the animals that we keep with us but if you look at you know animals at large by themselves you will find that they don't overeat they don't overindulge in senses that is by design in nature a lion will only hunt and eat as much as is required for the stomach to fill not beyond that and same is true for you know all animals if you see 
in the case of human being if i don't have the right understanding then i can keep indulging in the sensation because i am free to make the choice so i make that choice and i can keep indulging and that is why you have problems with obesity and so many health issues for people because we are not able to curtail we are not able to decide and make the choice of stopping to eat when there is sufficient for the body we keep eating for pleasure for taste isn't it but we can rightly utilize the sensation if we start working for right understanding with the right understanding we can certainly make the right utilization of the sensation so right utilization of the body as an instrument of the self what would be what would be the right utilization of the body not to try to take pleasure out of sensation and use the body for trying to get happiness but rather trying to use the body as an instrument for communication which we already do as an instrument for labor working with nature to try to get the necessary physical facility for the body to obtain the food and as an instrument for the continuity of the human tradition to form a new body so those can be some of the right utilizations of the body this i will do if i have the right understanding but if i don't have if i lack understanding then i may use the body to indulge in senses and you know for pleasure for seeking happiness from outside and all of those so we'll stop here something to reflect about something to look at and to see you know where we stand how much of sensation we are using rightly and how much we are using for pleasure for seeking happiness that we can try to reflect on today and we'll take your discussion your observations tomorrow and also if anybody has you know any observations regarding what we said or any questions regarding what we spoke of today that also we'll take tomorrow since we are now out of time